I bought this lathe uh, probably about a year ago and I picked it up from a canal building site and effectively when I picked it up it was covered in shit. Um, the beds had rust on it, the thing was caked in mud. Um, I took it home and like all good people do, I painted it. And that's all I did with it. And uh, over the years I actually measured, I've measured the wear across the bed and I'm seeing about four thou between here and maybe there of the deviation, my part, so maybe a two inch diameter bar would see over the length of it. So I've got a graph and um, it's probably not good enough for me. I've actually twisted the actual bed. I've put a taper on the headstock and it's taken out some of the actual wear. So about there and there, I get about half a foul and then about here, it just shoots up. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the whole thing apart and then I'm gonna send this bed to a regrind. So hopefully when it comes back, when I put it back together, it won't be a nice painted lay, it'll be a nice painted functional lay. So, uh, stick around. Okay, okay, so this might not be the wisest of choices of getting the headstock off, but it did work. And surprisingly, this headstock isn't really that heavy, which is quite sad. Um, you'll probably see me later on just manhandling it back in position, which again, I don't recommend, however, possible. So again, surprisingly light. I thought this bed would probably weigh in around 200-ish kilos. Given the lathe should probably be weighing in around 470 on the specs anyway. But no, I actually weighed this lathe bed and it's coming in around 100 kilos, which is, again, surprisingly disappointing. So um, I may well fill this up with epoxy granite. I am questioning whether the overall lathe is really 470 kilos as specified in beta sheet. But um, I don't have any means of measuring it, so uh, I'm just going to say it's false. So in it goes into the Volvo truck. Um, the car is pretty small, however, the sled that I made for the lathe actually made a big difference and it went in and came out of the car pretty easy. I did actually some straps in the car. It's got some mounting points when which you can uh, hold things in. And um, without the straps, I'd probably be reluctant to move it this way. But the, the lathe bed doesn't weigh much. You strap it down into the back of your boot, it's fine. So I'm really happy with the way that it's come out. There are some spots where in which the knife has had some water damage, which is over here. And they're not as good. I mean, we couldn't get all the pitting out, but I never expected to get any of this pitting out. Actually, I never expected the lathe to come back looking so good. So I'm really happy with it. Gonna go ahead and put the saddle on. So the ops I actually got done is I've got the bed reground, I've got the tail stock to suit, and then I've got the saddle as well, which has also been ground to suit the bed as well. And I have to mount the headstock 
and for that I'm probably not going to scrape this in, I'm just going to put some shims in. Um, I believe 3 thou was originally taken off the back end to actually um, get the headstock to fit down. So I'm going to go ahead and put maybe an equivalent shim over here and then play around with that shim height depending on what the test bar comes up as. But the first things that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to get the saddle mounted, I'm going to get the tailstock maybe, maybe on, but I need to level this bed. So that's the first thing that we're going to be doing. So this is what the underside of the saddle actually looks like and um, yeah, it's looking significantly better. When I previously set this out, uh, this area over here probably observed the most amount of styrations, but it was this side that actually received the most amount of wear. And um, it's been ground to actually suit the bed, but also he's taken off some areas over here. So this is where the actual saddle gearbox sits. And um, he's only taken off 8 thou because he doesn't want to change the way that the gears mesh. But it means that when I, everything gets mounted on, I don't have to drop the actual... Um, the the lead screws and whatnot, or alternatively, I don't have to build this up with um, molly guys or something similar. So that's the intention, and hopefully, it goes together real well. And um, I've also, like I mentioned, got this tailstock ground. So this sits on the tailstock screws, and he's found that off as well. I probably need to include a shim over here to actually bring this up again. So I'll go ahead and include that too. But hopefully, when things go together. It'll work a lot better than before. So over here I'm leveling the lathe. I'm using a machinist level and I'm basically mounting it on the saddle and running it up and down. There's a lot of videos online of doing this and they provide a far better description than me. Essentially this lathe has been sitting in its previous life on a very unlevel surface so um, the bed has a natural twist to it and even after the regrind a bit of this twist still exists so I've actually bolted all the four corners and I'm essentially talking the lathe into flatness and um, it works quite well however my foundations aren't particularly sturdy and in the future when I move hopefully I can alleviate that problem so I suspect it's going to move over time but for now things still remain fairly level. Okay, there's no excuses. I have safety boots and I'm just not wearing them. I really should wear some safety boots. Surprisingly, this is not that heavy. I mean, maybe 50 kilos at the most, but I don't even know if it's 50. I don't recommend doing this though because there's not a lot of control when you drop it onto that freshly ground surface. There's a dowel pill underneath here and it definitely wants to destroy that beautifully reground lathe bed. Um, however, this did work okay for me and I ended up getting this lined very well. Um, so would I do it again? If I had a bigger place, no, I wouldn't. I would actually use an engine hoist or something and do it properly. I have quite a lot of backlash in my cross slide. And it's not that much of a problem for me because I run DROs. However, it just feels nice to have a nice snug lathe. And that's what I'm trying to fix over here. Got the actual nut and I'm going to split it in half. And before I do that, I'm drilling three holes. There's two holes on the outside are drilled and reaped. And these are for two dowel pins. And the central one is for a bolt. And I'm using that bolt to effectively push those two halves against each other when the nut, when the lead screw is in it. So it preloads the whole lead screw assembly and eliminates that backlash. And um, this works really well. The lathe feels a lot nicer to use now. So over here I'm using some felt wipers. I backed it up with its like shim effectively. And the shim just helps retain that felt in place. 
Um, the felt actually works quite well. It acts almost like a lubrication reservoir and then um, lubricates the bed quite nicely. But it does do a relatively decent job of keeping most of the stuff from getting underneath the saddle, which could potentially lead to a subsequent regrind. So, a fairly important step. So unfortunately, I don't have any footage of me aligning the headstock. Essentially, you typically do this with a test bar. You put the test bar into your spindle taper bore and you run your DTI up and down it. This might have been a good thing because I couldn't obtain a test bar, but I also suspect that your bore within the spindle is not as true as it came out of the factory. Over here I'm using a chuck and I'm just using an aluminium bar that I machined using the crap bed I had on this before. So essentially the bar itself is not perfect, it's got that dip, that dip on that graph I showed you initially. However, because I know what the deviation on this bar is, I've measured it along the points, what I can do is I can spin the chuck and get my high and low points and essentially take an account of the run out in my system and then I can minus that from the deviation that I already know and measured on the bar. And then I can plot this on Excel and take it on the various points to work out whether my whole setup, my whole headstock is sitting high or low or left or right. So the proof is always in the cut and I had to do this a couple of times so just tweaking the headstock and taking another cut, remeasuring but eventually I got there. A little trick that worked really well for me was shoving an oil filled or oil soaked cloth in the center of this bore. I'm using a hollow aluminium tube here and it was chattering quite a lot. So after I did this, so it alleviated most of the chatter problems and the surface finish came out really, really good. So over here, you can see over the whole length of this bar, it's um, only deviating by two tenths, which I think is pretty good. Um, I actually did this cut twice because I didn't really believe the results first time and um, they came out very similar. I suspect by just me standing on the floor at different points in my shed, I probably alter the measurement, but um, in the future when I bolt it down to a proper you know, substrate, and actually uh, maybe fill in the bed with some epoxy granite, I might be able to get these results quite repeatedly. But I reckon seasonal changes at the moment, winter, summer, etc. probably changes these measurements a little bit. So this wouldn't really be possible without um, the regrinder, Matt, who um, I put some contact details down below, and uh, he's done a really great job on this lathe, and I think the results are actually really good. Um, I wasn't gonna put this video together initially because I didn't think I had enough footage, but if you did learn something, if you did enjoy it, then uh, give it a likes up, maybe consider subscribing. I've actually got quite a bit of footage already, already filmed some other projects. Just got to edit and put it together and um, it would be really good to see some of your support. So thanks for watching guys.